Hey folks, my name is Ian Rosenberger and I'm the founder of Day Out. We're a direct-to-consumer retail company that leverages ocean-bound plastic collected in landfill communities and turns it into jobs. And up until March 15th, things like these backpacks. Before COVID, we had saved over 100 million plastic bottles and turned them into products for our consumers. Our work brought millions of U.S. dollars in direct investment and revenue into low-income black and brown communities that are our planet's last line of defense in the global plastic crisis. In addition to creating our own brand, we've mapped and built human-powered supply chains for some of the biggest brands on the planet and taught them how they could use their businesses to do their part to solve the global trash crisis and keep tens of millions of men and women who work in waste collection employed. Then the world got sick. On March 17th, we were on track to have our biggest year yet on the road to 2021 profitability. On March 18th and in the months after, our retail business dropped almost 70%. We closed our doors by order of the Pennsylvania governor on March 19th and immediately laid off 30% of our staff. We cut salaries for everybody else by 33%. Worse, as oil prices dropped and eventually went negative, it became immediately vastly cheaper for major companies to make their goods out of virgin plastic or a barrel of oil, which meant global recycling stopped and over 10 million people were on track to be unemployed just as an incurable virus began to make its way into their homes. We were days from insolvency, but the global poor were, and still are, on track for an unnatural disaster of biblical proportions. I got a phone call from a local health system on March 21st, asking if we could make them the face shields used to increase the efficacy of face masks, and for the masks themselves. We said yes immediately, having no idea if it was possible. The barrier was, and still is, access to raw materials, sewing, and assembly talent and the ability to scale, which, fortunately, we have. We decided, sourced, and began manufacturing face shields within two weeks of the Pennsylvania governor's order to shut down. Because of our relationships in plastics, we were able to source over 60,000 square feet, which is over a football field of plastic in California, bound to be post-surgery dog collars, and over 13, mile of 13 miles of elastic, bound to be underwear. Somebody wrote an article about the initiative, and within a week, we had orders from overrun healthcare systems and nursing homes all across the country. Because of this initiative, not only did we hire everybody back at full pay, we hired an additional 15 people who've been laid off or otherwise unemployed because of the virus. Moreover, we've been able to inject resources into four other businesses who've helped us with cutting and stamping all the raw material. Many of those organizations hired people back because of this as well. In total, we estimate over 100 families have been able to continue to earn a paycheck uh, because of the initiative. We've delivered 75,000 face shields so far. We've taken the lessons learned from shields and are now manufacturing face masks for folks returning to work. We're currently making the first 125,000 of those by building on the direct supply chain we created for shields and leveraging the talent of local stitchers, tailors, and home sewists to create what we're calling a distributed manufacturing system. These masks will be distributed free of charge. We decided to use this novel manufacturing system to bring to market permanently a second mask design specifically for businesses and direct-to-consumer customers. This reusable design improves the quality and the efficacy of masks on the market and is designed to be easy to stitch a network of sewers from the safety of their own homes. As we make and sell masks, we're also ensuring that plastic collectors in our supply chain get the PPE necessary to stay, to stay safe themselves. Our goal is to ensure that at least 10,000 waste workers globally have the equipment they need to stay safe. In 10 weeks, we went from backpacks to the medical device company that I never wanted. <laughs> Unfortunately, the struggle for the world's plastic collectors is likely gonna get worse before it gets better. I have just one ask. If your business needs masks, they return to work to keep your employees safe. We'd like very much to be the ones to make and deliver them. We're so grateful to our unreasonable family and to Barclays these dollars will offset all of the setup costs for these efforts so that we can ensure the permanent viability of this manufacturing system beyond COVID and PPE. Thanks so much.